all applicants are here. Uh, take it away, Brian. Good evening. Um, you hit the record button, right, John? Confirmed. All right. Good evening. This is the uh, Town of Wethersfield Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission. This is a public meeting, Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. It is uh, 730. This is a virtual meeting in accordance with governor, the governor's executive order. And I just want to welcome uh, the commissioners and the uh, applicants today. And at this time, uh, we will take any public comments. Seeing no public comments, um, application number 73921, Natalie Real, 310 Hartford Avenue, parcel number 218002. John, is she uh, going to present today? Uh, she is not. Okay, she is not presenting. So we're going to be moving right along to application number 74021. The Phoenix 1210 LLC, 1210 South Scene Highway application to construct a new 25,000 square foot school building within a regulated wetland and floodplain area. The applicant is here. Uh, yes. yes, good evening. Good. Uh, Kevin, how are you? Members of the commission, for the record, Kevin Johnson, Close Jensen, and Miller. Uh, with me is Mr. Mike Panic, uh, applicant and uh, property owner. Um, just one um, housekeeping thing first. Um, I, I'd just like to call your attention to uh, the agenda. This is something that I noticed. Um, it, it says the application to construct new 25,000 square foot school building within regulated wetland and floodplain area. Um, th this application, we're, we're not proposing to construct uh, anything within uh, an inland wetland. Uh, yes, we are within uh, the floodplain. So I, I just wanted to get that on the record. Um, just a little background information. I, I think you're all aware, familiar with this site. Uh, this is the site of the former uh, Puritan Furniture site. Um, you'll recall back in 2019, uh, this application uh, was presented uh, to this commission. Uh, it was approved. Uh, we subsequently received site plan approval. Uh, construction began in 2020. Um, again, if any of you have been by the site, you'll, you'll know that uh, the existing uh, phase, what we call phase one building, this is the one story building, uh, is, is up uh, and constructed. The uh, storm utility infrastructure, parking, lighting, landscaping, uh, that's also uh, been installed. Uh, the phase two building, uh, the subject of the application tonight, uh, is not constructed. Uh, originally, that was proposed as a two-story building. Uh, it's a, a, a two-story building with a 20,000 square foot uh, floor area. Uh, it's now uh, proposed as a one-story 25,000 square foot uh, footprint. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, this proposal does not encroach into uh, the inland wetlands. Uh, every, everything is confined uh, to the previously uh, approved uh, limits. Um, the wetland, and again, you'll recall uh, the previous approval uh, had a component, a wetlands mitigation component. Uh, that work has been completed. Uh, that was monitored. Uh, for a year or so by the soil scientist. Uh, and he just issued his uh, final report um, the end of October that uh, everything has been fulfilled and everything is stabilized. Um, so with that, I, I would like to share my screen and just go through some of the plans, walk you through the proposal. So this uh, first plan, this is what we're calling the existing conditions plan, just a quick site orientation. Uh, Silas Dean Highway uh, is to the top of the sheet, uh, direction north, and Mill Street is to the right. Uh, the railroad tracks are to the bottom of the sheet. 
Um, the graphics that illustrate the phase one building, uh, the parking islands, drive aisles, and so forth, uh, th those are from design plans, but it's illustrated here to represent what has been constructed under phase one. Uh, the storm drainage, as I mentioned, the storm drainage, utility infrastructure uh, has been installed. Um, the heavy uh, dark dashed line, that represents the 100-year flood line. Uh, that elevation is 29, and that's NAVD 88 datum. Um, moving on to the site plan. So... Again, you'll see the graphics of the phase one, uh, again, the parking and infrastructure uh, that's built. The heavier uh, uh, line work that indicates the phase two uh, scope of work. Uh, so the proposed building, again, that represents the 25,000 uh, square foot footprint. Um, on the original plans, uh, there was a, an additional row of parking on the south side of the building and a sidewalk. Um, so to accommodate this expanded footprint, we deleted uh, 14 parking spaces along that south side. There was also um, the original proposal, there were 36 parking spaces uh, in, in the lower level. Um, those also have now been uh, deleted. Uh, the, the reason those are deleted, um, the, the previous application, um, again, smaller footprint, we thought we were going to have the headroom to do parking at that lower level uh, with this expanded footprint, the structural requirements. Now that a structural engineer has actually begun to, to look at that, the, the number of columns, the placement of the columns, um, the depth of the structural beams uh, and then utility lines would have to be hung below those steel beams. Uh, it was determined that we're not going to have the headroom uh, at that lower level. So that would preclude uh, the parking. So again, that the, the loss of those 36 spaces and the 14, uh, we have a, a loss from the previous parking uh, proposal of 50 spaces. Um, there is a double row of parking still on the south side to be constructed and uh, another row on the north side and then a couple islands with some parking. Uh, that, that represents a total of 64 parking spaces. Uh, this is a proposed school. Um, there is an automotive uh, component classroom to this proposal. Uh, there's an overhead door on the easterly side of the building and a proposed driveway. Uh, into the building uh, that's being uh, highlighted right now. Uh, you may also recall uh, from the 2019 plans, this building originally had a port cochere in the front. Um, that is no longer present on this building. Uh, instead, it's, uh, the building has been pulled forward slightly and replaced with a series of, of walks in the front. Uh, moving on to the grading plan. Uh, again, the heavy line work represents the proposed contours. Uh, basically, the contours on the south and north sides of the building, they're about a 5% grade, plus or minus. There is some slight variation, but essentially it's about 5%. Um, again, the heavy black dashed lines represent the floodplain, uh, that line right there basically illustrates uh, the flood plain elevation within that lower uh, level of, of the building, uh, essentially following the foundation walls. Um, so um, again, the proposed building, uh, the finished floor is proposed uh, about uh, one and a quarter feet above the 100 year flood elevation. Uh, moving on to the utility plan. Again, I mentioned utility infrastructure. Uh, all the major work has been done under phase one. Uh, the stubs have all been left for phase two. 
Uh, primarily all these utility connect, or most of the utility connections are in the northeast corner of the building. Um, so again, all that stub work is there. Uh, because of the automotive component, uh, we are including an exterior grease oil separator uh, in that site drive, uh, and that's to handle anything you know, that may be generated within that building uh, as part of the classroom exercise. Uh, the structure uh, in the parking area on the south side of the building, uh, that's a subsurface uh, infiltration system uh, to handle uh, roof runoff, stormwater runoff. And, and that was uh, included as part of the original plans. We did have to make some uh, modifications to that um, to handle the additional uh, roof area. Uh, moving on to the erosion uh, plan. Uh, again, as I mentioned, this is all confined within, uh, you know, existing basically work zones. Uh, the retaining wall on the west side of that site uh, has been constructed. Uh, so we're proposing to have silt fencing basically at that top of wall and then following the entire, uh, what's currently uh, an unexcavated you know, excavated area. Um, and then we're proposing a construction entrance uh, from that partially paved driveway on the north side of the building. We've also included uh, silt sacks in some of the uh, existing drainage catch basins that were constructed under phase one. Um, we have the uh, erosion and sedimentation control narrative detailing the installation maintenance of these uh, siltation controls during and after uh, construction. Uh, I just want to touch briefly on uh, our cut fill uh, map that we have prepared. Uh, this is a computer generated uh, product, uh, does the cut fill analysis. Uh, the teal color that represents fill areas uh, and, and the brown uh, or light beige that represents cut areas. Um, you'll notice the phase one building is teal. That's obviously elevated. As I mentioned, the phase two building is also elevated above the 100 year flood, but it's represented by brown uh, because again, it's uh, basically compensatory flood storage beneath that, that building. Um, and, and the way that I should mention, the way that works is um, there, there's basically uh, two openings in that lower level. Uh, previously, as I said, there was going to be parking. So these openings are basically like garage doors. Um, so we're, we're not proposing solid doors on this proposal. The architect is going to uh, have, uh, for lack of a better term, um, like open grading, uh, just, you know, so water can go in and out, but you can't have anyone accessing that lower level, um, you know, and, and doing whatever in that lower level. Um, in 2019, um, we created uh, approximately 288 cubic yards of excess flood storage. Uh, with this expanded uh, building footprint, uh, we're creating an additional plus or minus 1,020 cubic yards of flood storage. Um, so between what previously was created, what we're proposing to create now, uh, is going to be about 1,300 plus or minus cubic yards of additional flood uh, storage. Um, so at this point, I would like to... Um, go over some staff comments. Uh, we did receive comments from the engineering department uh, yesterday. Um, I did have an opportunity to talk to Mr. Mills uh, this morning. Uh, we, we did go over these comments. Um, on item number one, um, I do need to make a clarification. And Mr. Mills, I, I apologize. I did not realize this until um, I was putting my notes together this afternoon. Uh, in my narrative, 
uh, item 6B attachment to the application, I had stated that um, we had received approval for 610 parking spaces. I think that's slightly higher. I think it was 623, give or take. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is the, the original uh, wetland uh, plan that was submitted contained 648 spaces going back through our computer records. Um, through the original design process with wetlands, uh, planning and zoning, uh, we added green space, we made some islands bigger, um, added total new islands. Uh, I believe that reduced our parking count by uh, 25. Um, so it would be approximately 623 spaces that were previously approved. Um, currently, uh, under phase one, uh, we had 509 spaces uh, constructed, 469 of these are the regular spaces, nine by 18, 40 of those are handicapped spaces. There's 64 spaces, as I mentioned earlier, uh, to be constructed as part of phase two. So that brings the total to 573. And then I mentioned we have 14 on the south side of the building and 36 at the lower level, uh, which will not be built had they, or were they continuing to be built, that would be 50, that would bring us back to the 623. So I apologize for that error. And I just wanted to correct that for the record. And uh, again, my, my apologies, Mr. Mills, I, I just didn't realize it this morning when we spoke. Um, at this point, I think Mr. Panic uh, would like to, uh, add a few comments about parking. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to him at this point. And then uh, I, I, I'm going to finish up addressing the remaining comments. So Mike, if yeah. you want to take it yeah. away. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, and um, thank you to the uh, committee for hearing our application tonight. I just wanted to bring attention um, as two years ago, as Kevin said, we went through the process of uh, putting this project together and bringing it in, uh, to all the town boards and parking seemed to be um, one of the things that was talked about the most at all levels uh, with the town. And I just want to reiterate that, um, <clears throat> uh, as Kevin said, and I don't want to take up a lot of time, but we did propose 648 spaces. We were approved for 623 spaces. Uh, this proposal that we bring to you tonight with the expanded footprint um, we are giving back an additional uh, 50 spaces, losing the spaces underneath, and also the 14 that we lo uh, lose uh, to what I believe is the west side of the building. Uh, pardon me. For south side. South side. South side of the building. Thanks, Kevin. So we are going to end up with uh, 573 spaces. And as I had spoke two years ago when we put the proposal together, uh, I had said that, you know, in my 20 plus years of doing uh, uh, real estate work, this would have been the first time that I stood in front of any commission and argued for more parking. Normally, you know, you're arguing for less parking and more building because uh, with more building, you can charge more rent and make more money. Uh, a, a landlord and a property developer like myself, we don't make any money on parking. So asking for extra parking was, you know, a, a little different. <laughs> Normally, we're asking for more building footprint. Um, and in this case, you know, uh, I, I don't want to go through the entire uh, process that we did two years ago. But the argument I made was is that I also own the building out in front, which is 1260 Silestine Highway, where it, I have a 36,000 square foot medical building. And I have the required parking that the regulations uh, require. And if any of you have been to 1260 to visit the doctor or even driven by 1260 uh, at any time during the day, uh, you'll see cars circling the parking lot because the parking is very tight over there. So I, 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 I think that or I know that parking uh, is needed uh, for the medical use. And the other thing I wanted to bring to this commission's attention since the parking was mentioned uh, on the comments that we received yesterday, 
is that when we did do the proposal for building number one, which I'm calling it phase one, that building at the time, we also got approval for a daycare center in building one. The tenant was going to put in 7,000 square feet of daycare, uh, which when we were doing our parking calculations of how much the load would be at that building, you know, we're figuring, okay, maybe 10 teachers or uh, so, and then all the kids that would be at the daycare. Now the daycare is, uh, I'm learning in the last several months, the daycare component is not going to be in building number one. And uh, so that's going to increase the amount of parking that we're going to need for building one a little higher than we had proposed even two years ago. And on top of that, when we brought this proposal to you, we had only rented out 30,000 of the 40,000 square feet to the main tenant. And we were projecting what that 10,000 square feet could or would be used for at the time. And now I know uh, since we signed a, a lease amendment, the tenant is gonna now take the entire building, which further shows that the medical, uh, not only in Weathersfield, but all over the country, medical is definitely growing. It's not shrinking, it's growing. Um, and um, so then fast forward to the school use, uh, you know, I realize uh, in the comments there that, you know, we're gonna have less square footage, but, you know, I, I think a school uh, with the, the size that um, the school is going to be, I think there's an argument that the school may park almost as many cars as the medical building will because you're going to be having, you know, a 25,000 square foot component with classrooms and, and different things. So, uh, you know, you could argue that, you know, the parking is needed as well for that. And um, in not wanting to make another 1260 where you have cars circling the parking lot, uh, and to shorten this up a little bit, I think it's uh, well within reason uh, to be asking for uh, the extra parking that we were approved for two years ago um, and minus the 50 spaces that we're losing that, you know, I'm living with in order to add a little bit to the building. So um, I just wanted to bring that to attention because Kevin started with number one, which was parking and I'm happy to provide more data, although I'll, I'll save that speech maybe uh, for planning and zoning when we can talk about parking. So um, that's just my little bit of input and uh, happy to answer any questions if there are any further. Uh, Kevin, I'll, I'll give it back to you to answer the rest of the comments and thank you all for your time. Okay, uh, so again, for the record, Kevin Johnson, close Jensen and Miller. Uh, so continuing with uh, the comments, item two, uh, this is comment about the basement of the school building, how it will be used, um, unclear how it will be constructed. Uh, basically, it's going to be concrete walls, concrete floor. Um, you know, we'll, we'll discuss with the architect to convey to the structural engineer uh, who will be doing that floor design um, to, to put spot grades in there. Uh, to make sure it will drain out. Um, item three, uh, this is the driveway on the south side of the building. Um, all our aisles on that south side, uh, including the, the two double rows that have already been built, they're all 22 feet wide. Um, with the proposed expansion of that building, um, you know, we, we can't do a 24 foot aisle. Um, so 22 is, is the best that we can do. Um, items um, four uh, and five that has to do uh, with the infiltration system. Um, we'll, we will revise, my, my engineer will revise those uh, details accordingly and, and resubmit to engineering uh, for further review. Uh, item six and seven, um, the, those, you know, we have no issue with those. Um, and that's the extent of the comments. And at this point, um, Mr. Panic and myself will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Do, do you, you uh, prefer to have the plan left on the screen or well, I don't know what your preference might be? Uh, maybe we can have the uh, either one. I mean, I don't mind seeing the utility plan. I don't mind seeing the computations of the cuts and fills, either either one. So the uh, commission can see something and, and refer okay. back to that. Um, I was happy to uh, hear that you were putting in a water separator. I didn't know that it was gonna be used for uh, automotive at all. 
Um, does any well, of the uh, commissioners have any? It's a Sorry. teaching. It's a teaching classroom. That they're not going to take, um, you know, autos off the street and repair them. It, it's mm -hmm. a teaching classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but with yeah, I, I was happy to see that it was there. I saw the floor drain and yeah. Um, does any of the uh, commissioners have any questions for the applicant? Yes, I have a couple. You don't okay, mind? Yep, thank you. Uh, apart from the automotive section of the school, what else will be taught there? It's uh, it's my understanding um, that the school will be teaching uh, have a nursing component to it to teach nursing, also automotive. I believe they teach um, uh, electrical uh, and the building trades at the school. Uh, I'm happy to, to tell you that the tenant that's proposed as a school is the Porter and Chester Institute, which is currently located in Rocky Hill. Uh, you know, being in Weathersfield an awful lot the last six months, I don't think it's any secret as to, uh, I think everybody knows what's going on. So, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, there's no secrecy. It's the Porter and Chester School, like I said, which is in Rocky Hill. Let me just give you a little background that the Porter and Chester School currently has 50,000 square feet up the street, and their new uh, prototype is to get into a 25,000 square foot footprint uh, due to COVID. They've been able to take a few things offline, uh, some of the bookwork stuff. So uh, that's was the need, and the reason why we're in front of you tonight is because we had had approval for a 20,000 square foot footprint. So, um, so uh, what happens there is the Porter and Chester, which I believe is nursing. Uh, automotive, uh, the uh, the trades, the industrial trades, HVAC, I think probably carpentry, electrical, that kind of stuff. All so you, you, yeah, you anticipate that the students basically are gonna be, they're all gonna be driving, basically. Uh, yes. They're gonna be older, yeah. they're gonna be driving. Any yeah, idea yeah. how many how many students they're gonna have? Uh, I, I've been told that uh, at, at, at what they're calling full capacity, it could be 175. Um, okay. You know, not sure if that's 40 hours a week or every hour of every day. But when I asked the gentleman that I'm dealing with, he said it could be 175. Okay. So that that leads to your concern about parking. Exactly. Okay. Uh, the basement. Uh, you heard it's going to be concrete. Is there going to be any anticipated use for that area? Uh, no, because you won't be able to drive a vehicle in there, as, as Kevin had pointed out. Originally, two years ago, we were thinking if it was a medical building and the way it was going to be constructed at 20,000 square feet, you'd be able to have parking. But under the current uh, plan with the architect, he said it's not going to be possible. So I've had to give up those spaces. Okay, no parking there. Uh, even I thought it, I, maybe I misheard him. I thought he mentioned a couple of uh, garage door type things that could be open, but. Well, the, 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 the plan is, and I don't have the rendering or the ability to put it on my screen, but the rendering uh, from two years ago for the 20,000 square foot footprint, uh, there was gonna right. be, uh, you know, some kind of gates that came down, uh, yeah. you know. So these gates, instead of being garage doors, which would be solid, these gates will be more like what you see pulled down maybe like, and I'm, guessing something like you pull down on a, like a storefront where you have some kind of like fencing so to say that can be pulled down so that the water can travel in and travel out in the event of the 100 year flood okay, so you anticipate any water there is just going to flow out onto the well if we're going to get water I, I would assume it's because the golf brook has risen at the 100 year flood level and coming to mm -hmm. our parking lot at which point the first thing it'll encounter will be the back of that building and yeah. uh, uh, Kevin can talk more about the, the, the storage, but that's the the, uh, the theory. The water goes in when you need the flood storage and then will flow right back out and back hopefully to the river. Okay. Yeah, right. Again, for, for, for again, uh, for the record, Kevin Johnson. Um, yeah, so just put the architectural rendering up. Um, so again, those two large openings, um, where, where the pointer is right now, th those are the areas that would be the openings. You know, originally those would be the garage doors. Th those other 
cream type features uh, in the center and to the left. I believe those are architectural features. Um, they're, they're, they're not also openings. It's those two primary large ones. All right, thank you very much. I have a question about the infiltration structure. Okay. Is that only servicing the roof leaders? It is. Okay. And that was included in the plans from uh, 2019 as well. Again, they're to, to accommodate the additional, um, you know, roof area. Um, my engineer did have to make some changes to that. And, and again, there are a couple of comments on that design. Um, so mm -hmm. that'll be further revised. Okay, I just wasn't sure if it was gonna be taking in other stormwater. No, just roof. Okay, thank you. Are there, are there any other uh, questions for the applicant? So I, I guess, what I'm understanding is we have a proposed building that is a few thousand, 5,000 square feet more than the original footprint is what I'm understanding. It was 40,000, but it was a two story build and now it's 25,000, one story. And you're giving up some parking, which you're, I remember the, uh, the presentation a few years ago, you actually brought some building, medical buildings from other states maybe from Georgia or whatever. I remember that and I remember you lobbying for them. Um, what I'm kind of thinking is, um, I do like the fact that we have a storage now, more flood storage that was created, but we're a little bit unsure how that's gonna work, how that's gonna drain from the comments. Um, I don't know if we need a little bit more time here to digest this or not. Um, well, I mean, you know, in, in terms of how it's going to drain, basically, if a hundred year flood came or any other lower flood event, it, it's going to flow through those grates of those openings that the architect's going to design. And as mm -hmm. the flood water recedes, the water would just drain out. It's going to flow over that rear drive. Um, yeah, water rises and goes down. And we're going to pitch the floor. It's understood. Mr. Chairman, you may have I speak? No, you, go ahead. Can I speak? Yes, go ahead. There. All right. I just, I, I just wanted to point out, um, you know, I, I did make comments on the parking as you, those of you that were on the commission may remember from a couple of years ago, that was one of the big topics discussed. Um, part of that came from DEP's MS4 requirements on the town that is looking for us to really, um, we're supposed to be reducing impervious area in town of 1% a year, um, which is very hard to do. And in this particular site, you know, I think the discussion last time was almost the entire site was gonna be paved and impervious, you know, in a floodplain adjacent to Gulf Brook. Um, I know the applicant, as it has stated, had come in with some um, data and reasons for needing as much parking as they did, um, just given their history with medical facilities. Um, my comments here were mostly pertaining to the fact that, you know, the proportion of parking from what was needed for the medical building here in phase one and phase two is not consistent with it being a medical building and now a school. And I think from talking to the planning department, there are some um, gray areas as far as what re what is required for a school and in my understanding they're looking into that um, so my only concern was I just want to make sure we don't again approve an excess number of parking far beyond what is required when there are still some um, outstanding questions that just ha haven't been answered yet I mean some of that might pertain to before we had two medical buildings that were going to be in heavy use at the same time um, I don't know the hours of the school if that heavier use might be in the evenings when medical buildings are slower so if there's you know, a difference 
the, the difference in the use of the uh, building does have an effect on how, how parking is needed. And I just want to be sure we're meeting our requirements of trying to keep the impervious areas down to the extent that we can. I think, uh, as stated, the parking count may have been a little different when they came through um, inland wetlands last time. Um, the final plans, once they were approved by planning and zoning uh, for construction, um, had 610 total parking spaces. So it might have been a higher number originally approved. I think they scaled some of that back when they got to the planning level, and that's how it was approved. But just looking at the the ratios of what you needed for 40,000 square foot medical building versus a 20, now a 25,000 square foot school building is not, it's not consistent, which is why I was just asking for additional information as to what's really required. Because if there's any opportunity to take out some of this additional parking and leave it as green space as um, that will infiltrate versus have the runoff, you know, it's something we, we are supposed to be looking at and, and should consider. Um, you know, at this point, I think they don't have all that information. Generally, parking gets handled more of a planning issue. But in this case, because it's in the floodplain, any changes to that are going to affect their impacts on the floodplain and calculations. Um, based on the data they provided, I don't, it sounds like they got plenty of storage capacity. So even if these, you know, areas were not, all these new parking areas were not parking areas and they were six inch high curb with grass islands. Yeah, I, I think they're still fine in that respect, but at this point, we just don't have that information. So I just want everyone to be kind of aware of where I was coming from with those comments. Um, I just want to make sure we don't, um, you know, approve something that is beyond what's needed when our goal is really to try and minimize that to the extent we can. And, and it might be that this is all justified. I just, at this point, I don't, I don't feel like enough information was provided to substantiate that. Thank you. Uh, could I just... Uh sort of uh, make an observation. What I'm reading in your comments, Derek, is basically, uh, I see that sentence, if so, consider constructing this parking beneath the building as a prudent, feasible alternative, which you are supposed to do to reduce the impervious areas and stormwater runoff. Uh, right now, and I think what Brian is getting at, the uh, basement use is a little unclear, and we've, we've determined now it's going to be concrete, and there's something about the doors, but it's still a little unclear as to exactly how that will be used. So maybe your prudent and feasible alternatives, you know, still applies here. And if that was used, then perhaps, depending on what the school uh, requirements are, maybe some impervious area outside could be eliminated. That sort of a lengthy interpretation of what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, a, a little bit. Uh, I, when I saw this from across, it, it was, I, I knew the parking spaces were going to be the discussion. Um, you, you know, you, you hate to take something away that was approved, that's, you know, but the application is different than previously approved. Um, should the applicant have uh, got approval from planning and zoning before coming to the commission, uh, but they go hand in hand. Um, you know, uh, you, you don't really all. I'm, I'm not. I'm not really. When is the next planning and zoning meeting? Do we know? I, I don't know the exact date. It would be the first Tuesday of December. Um, we we, we have not we have not put an application into planning and zoning uh, yet. Um, we are hoping to receive approval from this commission this evening to be able to move forwards with that application. We did go to design uh, review a week ago. Uh, we, we did receive their endorsement. The next P and Z meeting is uh, December seventh. Just for reference, our next in the wetlands meeting will be December 15th. It's four weeks away. December 7th is three weeks away. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just interject for a minute? I, I'm, I'm a little confused on the topic of the conversation as far as the parking goes, um, you know, we did get approval uh, for more spaces. We've come back with less spaces. Um, we've come back with more flood 
storage, which I understand that you guys are in favor of, obviously. And the change here, uh, you know, when I read the, the, the agenda tonight and I said, oh, you're building a new building. We're, we're not really building a new building. We're just modifying what we did. And I think I'm not an engineer and I'm certainly not on your committee, but I'm pretty sure that we checked all the boxes for what we need to discuss at an inland wetlands meeting. And I'm happy to have a full discussion on the, the parking, but I, I, I thought better not to do it again and you know wait till the planning and zoning when it probably will come up again. But that's just my observation you know, from the outside, but I, 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 I'm a little confused on when you say, we don't know what's gonna happen under the building. You know, we, we're gonna park cars. Now we're not gonna park cars. We're gonna have a floor that's gonna be take in water and let out water. That's a fairly simple concept. Uh, there's gonna be a grate there so nobody drives under there because we won't have height. So that'll prevent people from driving under there or like some unscrupulous developers who say, yeah, we're never gonna park cars there. And then you drive by six months later and there's 15 cars parked under there. We're certainly gonna not have that. So I'm just not sure where the confusion is. You know, there's not gonna be any water underneath the building unless you have the hundred year flood or some event like that. So uh, I'm just a little confused on, on what we're stuck on. Uh, just I, curious. I, I, I understand where, you, where what you're saying and I didn't take it as a new building. I may be not stuck, but just concerned with the town's MS4 permit with trying to uh, put an effort in to have some green space. Um, I'm just, I just want to make sure that I don't hand this over to town staff and say with these comments that have not been completely addressed to deal with the town staff and have me wash my hands with it. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that I wanna just give that to them. Um, I, I, I understand, I get what you're saying. There's only gonna be water in the basement if there's a flood, if the elevation rose that high, I get it. I get that it's not a new building, that it's something from an existent application that was approved. I get that you're giving us parking back. What I don't get is some of the comments and I wanna make sure that my, our town staff is comfortable as well as we're comfortable with moving forward. And I don't wanna um, I don't want to make a decision without having my basis covered right here. I don't know if there's any other input from the commission. If they feel the same, I don't know if there's a motion. I don't know if there's a motion out there for them to uh, you know, take some time, table it and take some time. Brian, I just have a, a, a question or two. Um, sure. Derek, when you say you don't have enough information to determine if um, some spaces can be deleted uh, relative to the explanation, what are you looking for? Do you have anything specific that you're looking for from uh, Mike or Kevin? Yeah, the way the, the plan C5 was written, it's just, you know, it talks about required spaces per our zoning regs for the medical building, which is 240 spaces, and then required for the school building, it's just to be determined by the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, which is kind of open-ended. You know, we don't normally, with most uses, there's a calculation that says how much you need. You know, as discussed, you know, what's required for what's been built is 240. They've built 502 so far. And without knowing what the school really is supposed to have, it's kind of hard to say if how much, if all of this parking is needed or how much of it or any of it without having that information. Um, you know, as I said, normally that's something that may be, uh, you know, normally parking is discussed with planning and zoning. However, in, in this particular instance, it's in the floodplain and that's why it has an effect on your decision um, where otherwise it may not have. Um, you know, so there are, there are options depending on if, if that number, you know, they have to talk to the planning department and figure out what, what planning will hold as a reasonable number because that's affecting this approval is really what it comes down to. So I'm looking for them. You know, part of my comment was, you know, talk to planning. I know they are looking at some other similar applications that have been approved in the past so they can come up with an idea of what, 
you know, what, what would be a reasonable number of parking spaces, just that that hasn't been determined yet. And I don't feel um, what's been provided for information is, is substantiated when you look at the change in use and the change in the size of the building for the amount of parking we have. Um, you know, just roughing it out before they had two uh, 40,000 square foot buildings, they got approved through planning and zoning with 610 parking spaces. So basically that's about 300 each. They have the 300 they need for the first building, phase one already, and there's still 202 left for a building that's much smaller than what's originally approved. So I just want to make sure that, as I said, that we are not, uh, or from my perspective, that we're, the town is you know, looking at and ensuring that if we're approving this much impervious area and this much runoff that we are covering ourselves, that that is actually what's required. And I just don't feel at this point they provide the information yet, that's all. Okay, and all right. And, and where does the, uh, Brian, I guess I'm confused, uh, and Brent, what the, um, the, the the basement has to do with any any of the things that we're, we're talking about um, because of the change of use. I'm well, missing that. But. The, yeah, the, well, the, what I was re referring to was the comments from Derek, and he includes the sentence that uh, he asks us to consider, or he asks the applicant to consider constructing this parking beneath the building as a prudent and feasible alternative to reduce the impervious areas and associated stormwater runoff from the site. So in other words, as I understand it, uh, although they are reducing the number of parking spaces, what Derek is suggesting is that they could reduce that number still further, perhaps if they had parking underneath the building. And that would free up areas outside the building to be used for green space or something else like that. At least that's the way I understand the conversation that's going on right now. And he, the, what's pushing uh, this type of consideration is that he has this uh, MS4 permit uh, which is charging us with some sort of duty to try and reduce this, if possible. I mean, you know, the other issue is though, he's, you know, we got a school here that maybe 175 more driving students will go to. I mean, it's a, it's a good use of their property for where I sit. I mean, I'm not on plane and zoning and I can't make that judgment, but geez, it sounds good to have it developed. But on the other hand, our duty here is to just, you know, decide that this is a good plan because this is the best we can do to uh, preserve, you know, the floodplain storage and, and you know, reduce impervious space. Yeah. Okay. The long if, of it, if not the short of it. Could could I add something, commissioners? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Kevin, if we could direct, um, if you could take the screen to uh, oh. sheet five, uh, the parking requirement, um, so that your commission. Uh, commissioners are given attention to uh, the delineation between um, what our obligation here for inland wetlands is versus planning and zoning. Um, only offering this uh, on sheet five at the lower right hand corner of the page uh, under the parking requirements, you know, uh, referenced in Derek's uh, first sentence um, and in Mr. Johnson's uh, and Kevin's comments. Um, okay, we'll just wait for it to, for it to come up. On the screen there. Oh, uh, so, sorry, technical yeah, difficulties. Not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. Um, once it comes up, you know, we'll we'll be able to better understand uh, the parking requirement and how the town's uh, regulations are are written, namely stating that uh, well, a medical use has a, a minimum requirement of uh, six spaces per thousand square feet. And which is what this application uh, came in with. Uh, there is no regulation in the town's uh, planning and zoning requirements stating, you know, how many parking spaces uh, a school should come in at. So thus, it's up to uh, the planning and zoning commission to set that requirement. Um, similarly, here uh, there is no requirement for parking. So uh, with that being said, our onus if you know we take a look at um the town's uh wetland uh requirements the wetland regulations wetland regulations tell us um that we have to uh hit uh what is a uh, low impact development and what is also um uh, to the maximum extent possible 
to, to minimize impervious areas by virtue of uh, minimizing impervious to the extent possible and practical where prudent and feasible. Um, and that's where our the regulations direct us to uh, have the applicants uh, consider that. And that's where our responsibility comes in why we're bringing this up. Uh, the MS4 permit is another requirement, but there in the regs, um, you know, is, is, is where this directive comes from. So that's our basis based on our inland wetland regulations of why parking is a consideration because of the amount of impervious and how it applies here. Not a question of how many parking spaces do they get to have here, but re rather how can we uh, uh, protect the water course, the floodplain uh, by minimizing to the extent possible the amount of unneeded uh, impervious for parking. Thank you, John. Just to ask so again. I get a question. Go ahead. So basically, you're looking on the 175 students they project to have. How is that going to be over the day? You know, is it going to be 100 during the medical office when they're open and 75 at night? And if it's that way, then they can reduce the parking spaces to have more pervious land. Is that what we're, you're looking to see if? Uh, they need to prove or provide? I'm not sure, to say it again, Bill? Um, on a, they said there's gonna be 175. It, well, it looks like you're looking to see that if they can, you can re reduce the parking spaces even more than what they're asked for, the 573. And with 175 students, if 100, 100 of them come during the day when the medical buildings open and 75 are at night, then they wouldn't need as many parking spaces because then they could park over in the medical facility area. Uh, is that what you're looking for to, to determine if that's what it is? And I can, then they can go from 573 to maybe 550 and then they'd have more green spaces. Is that the answer you're looking for? I think as a commission, we're looking for uh, the best fit to, to make sure that we, that we ended up trying to not have too much pervious area. And, and the applicant is trying to get as much parking as he could. Um, and we're trying to get, I, I'm just trying to get the happy medium here. Right. Well, they, what they did is they made the building 5,000 square foot bigger and they took away 5,000 square foot of asphalt. Is that how I understand it? So Which, they really haven't reduced any non drainage or they haven't taken anything away, have they? Right. But uh, what I believe Derek was saying, as far as the pervious surface, yes, but it's was the parking spots for 40,000 square feet. Now it's parking spots for 25,000 square feet is right. what I'm understanding. So that that's kind of where, what we're thinking. Well, that's what I thought too. So with that, you know, I mean, with 15,000 less square feet, should we be asking for less for the applicant to come in with less parking is, is my understanding. Okay, um, I, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lou. Yeah, no, I, 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 I just want to give this uh, uh, part, and I think I did that a couple of years ago when it first came. Um, my wife does work for Hartford Healthcare over at that um, building, and um, it's very difficult to get uh, a spot in, um, you know, after eight o'clock in the morning when I go by uh, to see what's going on or go to pick her up or, or whatnot. So I just want to make sure that with this, um, you know, new building lot that we we appreciate that there, okay, there were six spots to a thousand, but if you're using it and you're getting more people in and the classrooms are taking in more people than a doctor's office would for a particular square foot, you know, I think the questions are, are, are relative and would be good to get answered. 
um, as Derek was uh, was asking. But but I think really we want to be sensitive to the service areas, and we don't want to you know even though we're we need to be prudent about the, uh, the our, our, our commission and our standards. I just want to make sure that we're balancing that going forward. So I guess um, my question would be, what, Derek, do we do they need to provide to us? Um, what would you ask or Kevin, what would you, uh, um, you know, answer Derek to, as far as um, identifying, you know, what spaces may or may not be needed? Is that a question to Kevin? Uh, it, it's it's to Kevin or uh, you know Derek uh, or Mike. I'm not sure exactly what is going to be needed to to make a, a, de a definitive decision so that Brian feels comfortable with uh, where we're going with this. I understand. Let me just add a little uh, uh, more color to what I said earlier, and and that is when we went, you know, we've now reduced the parking twice. We we reduced it when we got approved two years ago. Uh, and we come before you tonight with a further reduction, albeit as a trade-off for making the building larger, which I understand doesn't uh, decrease impervious space, which I think more of the discussion is about impervious space than it is about number of cars. Remember that you, somebody earlier said, well, it was 300 spaces for each building, and that's not necessarily true. The, the data that we brought two years ago was that building Number one was going to need 324 spots to cover it at full capacity uh, with number of doctors, number of employees, patient trips per day. We had a whole, uh, a whole process that we came with. And again, I want to just remind you that when we got approval two years ago uh, at all levels, there was a 7,000 square foot daycare uh, in building one that was put into the parking proposal. Now a daycare has kids that get dropped off and the parents leave. So we were only counting on there being 10 daycare providers there in that 7,000 square feet of the 40,000 square foot building. The tenant has now taken that 7,000 square feet and scrapped the daycare, which we spent a lot of money to get approval. And on the map, you'll see where we had a whole area that is impervious that was gonna be for a playground that is now you know, nothing, which is fine. But now they're gonna have doctors and more patient trips and the new calculations are going to be that building one is going to need 363 spaces, not 324, because the daycare has now been scrapped and they're taking the extra 10,000 square feet. And like I said earlier, the building that we own out front, the 1260 that, that I think Lou mentioned, uh, you know, take a ride over there any day of the week at 11 o'clock and try and get a parking spot. You drive around in circles and that's 6,000, that's six per thousand. This tenant uh, is doing very well and has a lot of patience. And I also asked, when was the last time you went to a doctor for an 11 o'clock appointment and got seen at 11 o'clock? They stack them up. So they, it, it's more cars that come. And one of the reasons why I was able to get a lease for the 40,000 square foot is with the onus and the promise that I would make sure that I had enough parking, which is why two years ago, I lobbied very hard uh, and joked around a little bit. Usually it's people asking for more building and less parking and, and asking for that approval. And there also is, to Mr. Mill's point, there is no regulations as far as how much parking you can have. On, there's a minimum, but there's really no maximum. And I think that we've demonstrated through two years ago with building one, and now we come with the, uh, with the onus that they're taking 10,000 more square feet in building one for that same heavy use the lack of the daycare that's now gonna have patients and more doctors and more staff. Uh, and a school that I've been told by the owner of the school is gonna have 175 students at max. And correct to Mr. Chase's point, some may be at eight o'clock in the morning, some may be at eight o'clock at night, but I don't wanna be the one to have to tell either one of my two tenants that are spending a lot of money to, to fit up these buildings that I'm sorry that we're 50 spots short, that's all I could get approved. So I really think that we've proven the need for the parking without a reasonable doubt. Uh, I really think that we brought enough information. We did just get the comments yesterday. I think we brought facts and I'm happy to spend a lot more time if you wanna go into the parking calculations, but I, I'd assume that I would be bringing that up at planning and zoning. Tonight at Inland Wetlands, you know, I, I, I think we've, we've met the burden of proof that the parking is needed. We did it two years ago and we're accepted. I think that we've proven that, you know, that uh, the, the school with the number of students, we didn't even talk about staff. We're just talking about 175 students. 
you got to have staff for that. So you could make 175 into maybe 200 with a 363 uh, proposed use of building one. We get to 573 fairly quickly. I, I don't see how giving back even 25 spaces uh, would be a good thing for this development uh, or for me to have to explain to my current tenant who signed the lease and the one that I'm anxiously trying to bring to town, to the town, uh, uh, you know, uh, in this application. I, I honestly think that we've met the burden of proof. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may interject, uh, just to follow up on that. I mean, that, that, is, that is the problem is that we just don't have that data. I know he's indicated there's been a change in the original use for phase one. So I don't have any, other than verbally, I don't have any calculations that say, okay, this is the change. This is the additional parking we need. This is what we need for our new use. And that's what we, that's what I'm looking to get to justify what the proposal is, which like I said earlier, may be justified. It just, we don't have that information. In most cases, as you said, that would be a planning and zoning discussion. In this particular instance, it directly impacts the floodplain impact. And therefore that's why it's being discussed at this point and why it was also discussed you know, a couple of years ago when, when we were at this stage as well. All right. um, Mr. Chairman, may, may I add to that? Go ahead. Um, if we take a look at the town's uh, regulations themselves, um, when it comes to the requirements, uh, Article 4, the application requirements, Section 96, um, Subsection 15, uh, there is a point uh, that speaks to, and I'm just going to quote it, to the maximum extent practicable, the applicant shall consider the use of low impact development and runoff reduction site planning and development practices to meet or exceed the low impact development and runoff reduction practices identified in the 2004 Connecticut Storm Quality Manual. And then the definitions of these terms that were thrown around out here. Um, low impact development means a site design strategy that maintains, mimics, or replicates pre-development hydrology through the use of numerous site design principles and small scale treatment practices to manage runoff volume and water quality at the source. And then directly connected impervious area means the impervious area from which storm runoff discharges directly to the waters or directly to our storm water, storm sewer system that discharges to the waters of the state. Um, so uh, one of the commissioners made a comment about the uh, treatment practice. Um, if it's just collecting the roof runoff or if it's collecting anything from uh, the parking, uh, we're just speaking to uh, satisfying the town's regulations when it comes to uh, these low impact developments and, and why uh, uh, parking spaces are not uh, under discussion here, the amount or number of parking spaces. It's, it's the question of the amount of impervious um, to satisfy both the MS4 permits and the town's own inland wetlands regulations. Thank you. I have a question, John, uh, if you don't mind. When, what you just cited for us, what's the date of that? When did that come into effect? Uh, that's our September 9th, 2020 revision of our inland wetland regulations. Mm -hmm. So it, it um, postdates what we approved previously. Uh, that is correct. Which and doesn't mean we don't have to comply with it, but I mean, that's a, something to think about. Do we have any more questions? Is there any uh, further discussion? You know, I, I'd only, the only point I'd make, you know, I, I know what we were, are supposed to be doing and we're supposed to be doing, reducing the impervious area, but we did previously approve this, not all that long ago. We since have new requirements, which we should be complying with, but we need to be fair to the applicant. And we, I think we need to have good reason to, um, insist upon a reduction if that becomes necessary. I think from what I'm hearing, the uh, issue really is the lack of information as to what the requirements are. I mean, if he goes to plan and zone and they say, yeah, you need 175 spaces, now what do we do? Um, that perhaps is the way it has to go because they're the ones that set the requirements. Uh, otherwise, we're just kind of speculating here. Isn't it us that sets our requirement because we're in the hundred year flood? Is are they are they gonna throw it back at us? Well, do, do we have a do we 
say they say 175 spaces. I don't think they would, but whatever it might be. Uh, what then? No. I don't know. I, 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 that's, that, that's kind of where I am. Um, Can I just make one comment that I just kind of thought of, or is that not allowed now? No, please go ahead. Oh, so again, I think practically, because I'm not on the commission and I don't have the letters after my name that, that Kevin does, but this application that we bring to you tonight really that was approved two years ago really just swaps blacktop for rooftop and we've provided a bigger area to drain the water on the roof through a very expensive system that we had to enlarge under the ground there and kevin will tell me what that's called um so really what was approved two years ago the only real difference here is that we're switching rooftop for blacktop Everything else on the side has stayed the same. So again, in that, the way I look at it that way, I mean, we, we haven't impacted the wetlands anymore. We've, we, I think we said in the first five minutes of this meeting that you were happy that we were adding flood storage under the building. I think we've settled what the gates are gonna do and how the water's gonna flow in and out. We're really, I think if it boils down to, unless I'm missing something, just swapping rooftop for blacktop, and if we're treating the rooftop with a bigger separator that Ms. Calabrese mentioned, I think we've, I mean, I, maybe that's not the right way to look at it, but I just wanted to kind of put that out there because in a literal kind of sense, that's really what we've done. We've switched rooftop for blacktop. Everything else was approved two years ago. True, and I, and I understand, and I understand that, but I think as a whole, I think that we're forgetting that you're minus 15,000 square feet, which would have had occupants in it, which would have needed uh, spaces to park. And for us to keep moving forward with, this, with spaces, but 15,000 less, less square feet, I'm not sure we're doing, we were doing our job and have enough information on that. Um, believe me, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I believe I understand what you're saying. Um, I, un I understand that this is a previous application and we've already approved something and it's uh, maybe difficult for you to under you know not understand why we're having a kind of a discussion about it when it was already approved. I just have town staff that is looking for more information and I'm not totally sold on uh, the amount of parking spaces for 15,000 square feet less. And and we're and I'm willing to have that conversation at the planning and zoning level. And if 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 they have a problem with it or they say we have to come back to you, I'd rather approach that approach than than you know have to have a, the planning and zoning discussion with the in the wetlands commission with all due respect correct and i and i and that's kind of where i was going a few minutes ago when i was saying when's the next meeting you know that puts us into the 7th of december then you would come back to us and that's why i, I you know you know well, we, we, don't need to, we don't need to string things along if you don't have to but I don't know if, uh, I mean, is, 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 are the commissioners, did, I mean, am I speaking out of term here? Are they, are they agree with me? Is that, is that what they're seeing as well? Well, planning and zoning sets a number of parking spots and they, they come and say that it should be less then then they would make less or they come and say it needs to be more when they just add or delete parking spots and you know and then we've approved it meets i meets the inland wetlands commission and then planning and zoning set the parking issue you know if, if planning and zoning says they need more because the medical there's more medical facility because they took out and eliminated the, the Child care over at the phase one, 
maybe they maybe they need all the parking spots that they're asking for. Right, but I don't think that uh, planning and zoning cares about the town's MS4 permit. Can I just make an observation? Please. Um, my initial review of this application uh, earlier today, that's what I did in my lunch break. <laughs> um, you know, I was looking at all the details and uh, taking it all in and then really had resolved that there's only the flood issue at hand, right? No wetlands issue. And right. it's not more really um, other than this, the swap for what's impervious. So I, I thought it was gonna be pretty straightforward. The discussion on parking, I, I would just add that parking as, as um, John pointed out in the, the zoning table, it's based on use, not so much square footage. So it, it, um, it you know, it's not square footage of the medical space and how much parking do you need for that? And now it's something else. And that's a discussion for planning and zoning. What would have been helpful is if planning and zoning had had the opportunity to review this and comment much like engineering would comment for planning and zoning to have the planning staff comment for inland wetlands <laughs> on something complex like this that's not you know if we're looking for feasible alternatives um or prudent alternatives i mean one thought that went through my mind is okay you can't use that for parking um because of the structure of the building and so it's too it's too short down there. Is there a way to make it high enough to accommodate cars? And I'm like, wow, okay. I said it now, but I was thinking, <laughs> you know, that's a big, is is that prudent, you know, feasible and or prudent. So um, you can also add a condition. If we, if we were to come up with a motion, add a condition for an assessment of that, you know, the least, um, impactful parking right. scheme. I mean, there can be a row of spaces that uh, have pavers and that the cars park on for pervious. I mean, we can, we, we, that, that can be added. We've done that before, Brian, correct? I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, um, that's kind of where I've been saying that I, 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 I have, we have town, town staff looking for information we have a, an, a, an applicant that has already been previously approved for X amount of things. He's, he's lobbying, he's doing a good job. Um, it's up to us to put it to a vote with some conditions, put it to a vote to table it. It's up to us to say, yeah, you know what, let's, let's make uh, all the parking on the south side, uh, you know, the pavers, you know, so uh, he can get his spots. Um, can I, can I uh, add yes. a couple comments? Absolutely. Uh, again, for the record, Kevin Johnson. Um, you know, I, I, I think what you're saying with the pervious pavers uh, is a great idea. Um, as I mentioned, you know, for, for pervious pavers to really work the way, you know, you, you really need to have a level area so that everything percolates in at a constant rate. It, as I mentioned uh, in my presentation with the grading plan, we have 5% grades, uh, those parking areas on both sides of the building. Those 5% grades are tied into portions of the parking that are already built. Um, we're not going to be, so, so if we were to put pervious pavers at a 5% grade, most of that water is just going to run to the lowest point. It's, it's not going to percolate in at a constant rate over that entire area. So you're, you're putting pervious pavers down. Yes, some will go in, but you're not going to get the full effect of that as if it was a level area. Um, you know, could, could some of those, could a couple of those islands be turned into a rain garden? Um, you know, at a 5%, you know, you'd have no curb or a leak off. Um, you know, you're going to have a lot of water flow coming. You know, we could redirect some of the water into there possibly by regrading, but 
um, you know, it's going to be a lot of water into a air, you know, coming off a 5% grade, um, you know, it, for some of these LID practices to, to really be practical, it, it's not conducive with the grades that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the possibly uh, I would like to, you know, I, I can't commit to this without, um, you know, Mr. Panic's input, but possibly a portion of uh, the front sidewalk, um, maybe a portion of that could be pervious pavers. Um, yes. But in all on, because that's a flatter grade, but uh, in all honesty, I, I just don't think you're going to get the effect on those grades with the pervious pavers. Um, and I, I think the other thing that's important to remember is that, yes, there was a previous approval. Uh, you know, there's 500 plus or minus spaces that have been paved already uh, at considerable expense to Mr. Panic. I mean, he has spent millions of dollars already to develop this site, the infrastructure and so forth. Um, so. Thank you. Um, I, I, I totally get it. I'm, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to move forward with um, this application, but, you know, getting something back for the less square footage. I mean, that's that's what I think we're hung up with. We have to show a good faith effort. And, you know, the best thing you said was maybe the sidewalk and this way, but, you know, he doesn't have to rip up any of the pavement he has to. I mean, that's, that's kind of where I was going, where we might, you know, I don't know if we need another minute to think this thing out. So, um, you know, you, you, the proposed applicant, at least, you know, he can get his spaces and we can satisfy the requirement is what I'm thinking. So um, can I ask a question? Um, because it did come up since we had done this earlier. And as, uh, as John had talked about, it was um, enacted after this. Are, do we have to follow that? Um, are, we, are we mandated to? Um, is it in the interest of, uh, you know, our commission to follow it, even though it came in after the first date of um, authorizing this? <clears throat> I can speak to that. Um, I, yeah, there was a previous approval on the site. You need to look at this as this is, this is a new application that's been submitted that's different, and it's substantially different. I mean, granted, looking at this overall site, it's a small percentage of a big project. In most applications, this size project is a pretty big project on a parcel. It just happens to be much smaller here. Um, you know, I think as far as now, the regulation, other regulations this is a new application. You know, as I've said, maybe the parking is justified. It's just, in my opinion, that, that hasn't been demonstrated yet. Um, the commission can, can choose to add tonight. Generally, so you understand our regulations are when an application is submitted, the commission accepts the application at the first regularly held meeting, which is tonight, and then has a 65 day window to act on it. So if there's any reservation, you are allowed to table it and let them get the information in and let's confirm it if you wanna go that route. Um, alternately, like you said, you can give an approval with a condition. Um, if there are changes that come up when this information is provided at a later date to planning and zoning, then then they may either need to come back or if it's minor enough, maybe it's an administrative staff approval. It would have to depend on what the, what the changes are. I think to go back to Mr. Panic's point, and that, that, that's really what the gist of this is. He said, well, we're just trading off parking spaces for building. Correct. And that's, that's the issue is that we are reducing the building size by 30%. We're changing the use from a heavy medical to a school use and we've seen really no reduction in impervious area to show for it. And that, that's just, that's why, that's my point. We, we should see more or potentially should be able to see more. I understand they had originally designed parking under the building. And now they're saying that that original design really, it doesn't, doesn't work anymore. So they they took it out, but that is my point. It's like, well, there, there's a significant change in use. There's a significant change in size and yet, you know, we, we still uh, don't have enough information to justify, you know, the parking that they're asking for. So that, that's all I'm looking for is to have the information 
you know, that information is going to have to be provided, whether it's provided for inland wetlands or provided for planning and zoning. You know, this is a discussion now because of the floodplain impact. This was outside the floodplain and this was a different application, then we wouldn't be having this discussion. That, that's why we're having the discussion tonight. Uh, can I offer something else, Chairman? Yes, sir. Yeah, and according to the regulations, you know, uh, for additional information, um, we want to be cognizant to that uh, staff comments and review was only made available um, yesterday. And so while we did have a discussion with the applicant, uh, if uh, it is that uh, the commission desires the applicant to provide additional information, um, that's well within your right um, to move for continuance. And at, at our next scheduled meeting, that would give uh, an opportunity for um, Derek's comments to be satisfied and allow uh, the commission to have uh, something to, to resolve this. Because at, at this time, an application isn't before planning and zoning, but um, this could help smooth this out without uh, uh, a regulation of the parking spaces, but simply about the impervious area that might be of um, assistance to the commission at this time as a, a possible course of action. Thank you. Can I uh, uh, just add a suggestion that as you know, trying to be a property owner, not a landlord, I try to do the right thing. I think we've proved that over the years with all of the property that we've owned in Weathersfield, and I've been before this committee several times. Is there any merit, and I don't know, and I'm asking without asking Kevin, so I'm going on a limb. Is there any merit to, since we're not going to be driving underneath building two, and we're just going to have those grates to let the water flow in and out, is there any merit to not having blacktop behind the building where those grates are going to be? Because we had blacktop there previously because people were going to drive into and park underneath building two. And if we had some sort of impervious something there it would still allow the fire department which i would think would be the person that would be most interested in being able to drive around all four sides of any building uh, if it was an impervious uh paver right behind the grates i don't know if that has merit but i mean just kind of spitballing here that maybe that is something that you know the commission could take into consideration and and it wouldn't be of harm to me it wouldn't affect number of spaces for me it wouldn't reduce the spaces any more than we've already reduced them twice over the last two things. Uh, you know, I, I'm i sure that we would have to get Mr. Dignati, uh, the fire marshal, involved in that discussion, but I'm sure that, you know, we could do that at planning and zoning where we could see if his apparatus is capable of driving on impervious papers. I would assume it is, otherwise this board wouldn't recommend impervious papers, but that's an area where we could definitely give back so that both sides could, you know, it could seem to be a win-win where I still have the parking spaces that I am confident I need uh, and can prove at planning and zoning uh, in a couple of weeks. And this commission can gain uh, a pretty good sized chunk of blacktop and turn it into something different that the, you know, that the fire department can drive on. I would, I, I would offer that up as a, you know, maybe we can make that a condition and then check with planning and zoning when we get to that level. Just a, a, an observation as the meeting is progressing here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have any comment on Mr. Panic's uh, proposal? Yeah, uh, Kevin, what would be the square footage of, uh, of pervious uh, pavers back there? Oh, gee. I don't recall the building dimensions offhand. Um, yeah, it's a 24 foot aisle. Um, I want to say the build, Mike, do you recall the dimension of that building offhand? Was it 200? Uh, uh, Mike, I think you're uh, muted. Yeah, I'm muted. Sorry. I'm having difficulty with your screen up. I can't get to my files behind it. I'm a little technical challenged in that respect, but uh, it is 24 foot wide. And uh, oh. I, I think it's somewhere is around 4,000, maybe 4,500 square feet, give or take. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Just going by memory, what the building length was. Yeah. And it's a 24 Absolutely. foot wide fire lane. Correct. So 
but you'd be talking about a tenth of an acre. Mm -hmm. Give so or take. What, how, how does that equate, Derek, to the um, to the one percent of uh, mitigation? Well, that one percent is town wide. I mean, the original application increased the impervious area here by about three acres. So. That to give you a scale, I mean, this was a huge increase in impervious area originally approved a couple of years ago, um, which is why, you know, like I said, so much of this discussion at the time too was about parking in impervious area. So, um, you know, that would have a small, you know, small impact and could be considered an improvement. Um, it still doesn't get to the heart of the issue of, you know, how much parking is required in our, and in what they're showing in the floodplain reasonable or not, in my opinion, at least. Does any commissioner want to put this to a vote to table it? Does any commissioner like to put this to a vote um, to approve it? Brian, can I, can I ask one question before we do that? Um, sure. Mike, um, what would be, would it be a, a, an issue if we were to table it, you go to uh, P and Z, and then we bring this up on the meeting on the 17th to finalize it? Would that be a hardship for you? It, it would be in the sense that, you know, I, I have some, uh, you know, time frames with the school and they're, you know, unlike a medical where you, you can kind of open any time you want, the school has a, a pretty definitive schedule and I've taken the liberty to try and get these meetings. I mean, last Wednesday we were at design review and then this week and that's so I was trying to, you know, expedite it and honestly I thought planning and zoning was going to be the hurdle I wasn't really prepared for uh, the hurdles to be here uh, with what I thought we were doing be that as it may it would be a hardship uh, that's a word you could use in the sense of timing is critical for us to secure this part of securing the tenant is securing the approvals with the town and um, you know losing two weeks even or or, or maybe a month is, is could be a problematic for me and could take the tenant off the table, which takes the tenant out of okay. weather shield. And I don't want to go any farther than that. It's a problem. If the commission is okay with it, would you be willing to clean up some of Derek's comments, come back with some you know, pavers in the fire lane possibly, and we can hold a special meeting maybe on the 1st of December and get you in before planning and zoning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm not sure yeah. how the other commissioners feel. I know some want the planning and zoning to put their stamp on it. I'm, I, I'm just throwing it out there for discussion. Brian, I, I, I agree with that. I wouldn't um, mind coming back for a special session if there were updates and Derek is uh, is happy with those updates. Yeah, I have no problem with that. I don't mind a special meeting. Um, just knowing that I'm sure you all know wetlands have to act before planning and zoning can act. So it won't be a kind of you know, we can get their take on something, but they cannot vote on this before we do. Right. So that's this would put us in front of them, in front of their seventh meeting. So uh, right. the, the special meeting we right. need in. Yeah. Yep. And this way, town staff can get some information that they're happy with, and we can see what comes back, and we can get this moved along. Uh, can I, uh, is there a, uh, we have a vote for special meeting um, for Wednesday the 1st? If it's just a motion, we have a motion, motion on this. Just do, 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 you, do you want this to be tabled until a special meeting on the 1st? That's mm -hmm. your idea? Is that what we're doing? Yes. 
it's going to allow us, the table is going to allow us about two weeks for the applicant to come back with a little different design and answer some of the town staff's questions so they can feel comfortable with uh, the information. And we can feel comfortable with a, a vote. Well, I'd be willing to make a motion that we table this until a special meeting on uh, Wednesday, September, uh, December 1st. 730. Okay. Okay. Do, do, do we I have will a second, second that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Moving on now to application number 741-21, Gary Warner, 530 Main Street, parcel number 251-001. This is an application to replace deck in addition with three season porch within a floodplain area. Is the applicant uh, here? Yes, this is Gary Warner. Uh, I'm at 95 Minichug Drive in Glastonbury, his current residence. And it's not for a three season porch. It was changed to an open porch okay. uh, due to uh, the design of the piers needed to be engineered and too much 65% of each of the walls needed to be glass. So it really wasn't that much of an emotional issue to us whether it's open or closed. All we mm -hmm. need to do is uh, be able to put gutters up to control the the uh, water running to the foundation. So we we changed it from foundation also to uh, piers, mm -hmm. uh, putting in 10 inch piers to uh, three of them. The rest are foundation supported. <clears throat> On the latest print that I put in, I did not change the title, but the picture actually says open porch. Quick edits. I'm actually looking for that now. Yeah, on the plan itself, it shows open porch. The title still says three season. I can share my screen and kind of show you what I'm looking at. If you could, please. Just bear with me a second. Mm -hmm. so this is the plot plan. Are everybody able to see that? In this area is where I am looking to put in that porch. I just have a blue screen. All right. How about that? Same. How do I get back to my share screen? <laughs> I'll pick a different screen. I got two monitors and apparently I picked the wrong one. How do I get back to that? I, I do not know. I can only handle one monitor. Uh, I don't see the share screen. There you go. There you go. Ah. I, see, I see the plot plan now. Okay. So this area where the red is, this circle, yep. this circle red is where I plan on putting the open porch. Mm -hmm. And the circle out back is where I would put the, uh, the stone filled, uh, stone filled pit of whatever size, because they've got plenty of room back there for that. Mm -hmm. So the, this is where the, porch is be replacing this deck with that porch mm -hmm. and on the runoff there we just don't have any way to put gutters up to be able to capture this and every time it rains large or small it goes right to the basement so we mm -hmm. were looking 
by continuing this kitchen addition on that was put on in the 1800s mm -hmm. and we would put a valley gutter in and bring it across and then that way we could place a gutter that would go and collect uh at one with one gutter and this is the where i was planning on putting the pilings this is a brick foundation that's from the 1800s. This is mm -hmm. a brick foundation from the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And this is a concrete. Not quite sure when that was put in. That's a con that's a concrete frost wall. That's a con yes, correct. It's just is it's it? not slab on it's not slab on grade, it's a concrete fr frost uh, wall. Correct. It's a, it was an inaccessible crawl space. Mm -hmm. Uh and it was a bathroom only. Mm -hmm. It's going to continue to be a bathroom, but we've dug down the crawl space and we now have it accessible by going, knocking out the uh, stone enough to mm -hmm. be able to get into the space. So we're going to be putting support on this foundation, this foundation, and this foundation, and then these three pilings to support the open porch mm -hmm. and be able to put a gutter around this because right now the water just runs into this area and has caused a lot of rot and decay on, on this on both of these, all these walls in this space. So in going through the calculations of this, it looks like we're per, we're displacing about uh, 0.25 of a cubic yard by sinking the piling. Mm -hmm. And talking to engineering, they suggested that we only go three and a half feet and put in a footprint on the pile, which would calculate out to the same. Mm -hmm. You know, by putting a, a yeah. different base on it. So that's kind of the summary of what we're looking for. It comes in, you know, I had the surveyor come out with a GPS and it was 24 feet for ground elevation um, one and 28.92, I think it was on the other two. Mm -hmm. The one in the center was 24 and both of these were 23.92. I'm not quite sure where the water runs. I guess back towards the house. <clears throat> Mr. Moore, let me let me ask you a question. Have you uh, seen um, the uh, notes from the, the town? Notes. Notes from November 11th. Remember? No, no, I have not. I've had I've had problems with my email for a while. If it was emailed to me, mm -hmm. uh, what were the notes? It says the floor of the proposed three season porch will be approximately two feet below the FEMA 100 year flood elevation at approximately 28 feet in, in this area, which they're looking for a calculation. We would be looking for a calculation because that would be in the flood plan of calculation for storage. We'd, we'd have to use that, put that also in your calculation for how much area you're taking up. Well, the only area that I saw that it was taking up, I see what you're saying. Would be would be that porch, that two feet of porch, and the sill and everything around there. That whatever's below that mark, of, that flood elevation, has to be considered. So the flood elevation is twenty eight. Twenty eight feet. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so 28 feet, so, and I would be two foot, the porch floor would be two foot below that, roughly. Right, so you'd have to take this, that two feet. We'd have to take that two feet with the square footage in calculation with the piers. I'm not, I'm not displacing anything and the water could still come under it and it would perk underneath. I'm not quite sure. Is it because we're shedding the water? 
It's because it's because you're taking up space, volume. It, that is a volume in it. I know water could pass, but it's still volume. All right. Well, if you tell me how big a hole I need to dig, I'll dig it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those is what the notes from the town with the town uh, staff reviewed from your plan, and that, those were their comments. I should have said not notes, their comments. Do we have any other comments from this commission for the applicant? You talked about a gutter. Is he putting a roof on it or where's the gutter going? The gutter is going to go, well, right now, uh, what's the best way to show it to you? Right now, there's a gutter on this and the downspout is off to the side. The gutter on this higher roof runs onto this roof, which has no gutter. Yeah. And there is a small gutter on this that drops right here to nowhere. Yeah. And what yeah. we would be doing is we'd be putting a gutter from here that would go over and it would come down where this one comes down. Oh, okay. We'd keep it coming out of this because it all drops into this point right here. Right. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Would we like to Ask Mr. Warren to get us the calculations for that, that, what we're looking for, what's in there, or do we want to direct him to work with town staff on trying to get that? I, I think probably the best bet is to have him work with uh, town staff to get it rectified. Okay. Yeah, all um, I need to know is how big a hole I need to dig and how much. And the other question I had on that is what size rock do I fill it with? Mm -hmm. So, but yes, it would be great if somebody could work with me because I'm not sure I quite understand that calculation. Displacing of the earth, I understand. I'm not mm -hmm. quite sure what the roof square footage calculation. We're looking at seven and a half feet by about little 12 feet, I believe it's. Maybe a little more than 12 because it's this area here as well. Of square footage, and is that how that converts to cubic? I'm not quite sure. Would you? We would just need the, the volume of the two feet that would be in the flood zone. That two feet, so it'd be times two feet. Right. So it would be two feet on your square footage. Uh, you know, divided by twenty seven is going to give you the cubic yards. Okay. Uh, I might say, make a comment. It sounds like basically Mr. Warner is willing to comply with those two comments from the town. Uh, you could make a motion of acceptance conditional on working those two items out with the town. I think he's pretty willing to do it. Okay, we, 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 we talked about one of them, which is this square footage. What's the other one? <clears throat> or if I could basically, get- the Basically hole. digging the hole. Oh, oh okay. Okay, I, I have my email fixed now, uh, yes. Mr. Miles. If you could send me that comments again, I would like that. No. Or if it's in, if it's in your uh, decision here and you repeat them there, that's fine too. But certainly, uh, I can uh, make sure I dig the hole and fill it with whatever requirement. I just don't know the media that you want it filled with: uh, crushed rock, uh, round rock, large, small. I have done pads like this before, and it was a mixture. And then, obviously, it was covered with a uh, with a the same wrap that you put over a septic system to keep 
the soil out of the rock so it continues mm -hmm. to drain. Uh, if it's that kind of material, then I have, you know, I understand it. Okay. Well, uh, we've, we've got no problem. Oh, if I may, Brian. Yes. Yeah, we've got no problem working with the applicant. Um, uh, this came in uh, as a building permit. Um, and it was determined, you know, discover that it was in the floodplain in the proximity to the cove. So building requirement require that, you know, we come through wetlands and the applicant um, has worked with us and modified the plans, adjusted this from the um, uh, crawl space location with building department. So, um, you know, I, uh, with, with our town engineer's concurrence, I see no problem in uh, approving this, you know, subject to the commission conditions in uh, the memo dated November 11th. And uh, uh, we can certainly work with the applicant um, to ensure that these plans uh, meet that as a condition of approval from the commission's perspective. Okay. So do we have a motion for application number 741-21, Gary Warner, 530 Main Street, parcel number 251-001. Uh, uh, with, um, you know, stipulation that uh, he, Mr. Warner works with town staff on the comments dated November 11, 2021. I move to um, approve that based on Brian's um, verbiage. Second. Have... I'll second. Can we take a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you, Mr. Warner. Yeah, um, thank you for your time and your assistance. Thank you. Moving on to the Conservation Commission business, uh, seeing none, general business, the approval of minutes dated August 21st, 2021. Is there any corrections that need to be noted? Do we have a motion for approval? Motion to approve motion. the minutes. Do we this have a second? Clark. Clark, Clark uh, made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. You can second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Uh, we have no uh, no correspondence. So uh, can we have a motion for adjour adjournment? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Clerk second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Thank you, commissioners. You're welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Have a good, good night. night. Good 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 night.